Divine True Spirit Interaction Jesus, Mary and others interact with people who have lived on earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. The title of this spirit interaction is Rachel interviews Jesus about his return, during which Mary channels Rachel, a celestial spirit who is a first-century friend of Jesus and Mary. And after a general discussion with Jesus, Rachel begins an incomplete interview with Jesus on the subject of his return to earth, but finishes the interview when Mary becomes tired. The session was recorded on the 6th of March 2018 from 1.30 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hello everyone again, it's uh, Jesus and Mary here with you again. And uh, Mary and I have been doing some channeling today and we've just done a couple of channelings just earlier and this is our third one for the day and probably our last I would suggest. Uh, we decided that oh, it would be nice to have a chat with some of our celestial friends maybe <laughs> after after having a chat with uh, some of the, um, well, our, our friend Stuart who has seemed to be a bit angry with me. <laughs> Mary wants to have something a bit lighter I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we don't know what's going to happen, no. who, who's going to we'll show see, up. We'll see but... who shows up for this conversation. Yes, but um, <laughs> mm. yeah. it's, it's, not, it's not so nice when they don't feel so nice towards you and, and I find that unpleasant. Yeah, yeah. well, I, I don't necessarily find it so unpleasant anymore. I, I just find it more... Um, sad about the lack of transfer of information just driven by some kind of emotion that a mm. person has mm. it's really people get offended quite easily at things that i feel like um are, are only statements of truth mm. um yeah but as i said the main reason why people do that is because of that joining of the issue of worth yes with the issue of what they know and their development and other things like that whereas i don't see i see a person who every person in god's eyes has the same amount of worth mm -hmm. yeah but it's not obviously that's not a lot a lot of scientists have become scientists in order to seek worth yeah through knowledge because of, well, it's not only seeking worth through knowledge but generally nowadays the the community at large believes that if you're a scientist, then it means you're worth something. Mm. Um, and if you're, a, you know, a rubbish collector, that you're not worth anything. Mm. And that that is a problem as well, because mm. every person who contributes to society is worth something to society, whether they are contributing with regard to intellectual knowledge or contributing to regard to service. Yeah. Um, but it, it's just sad how people see the connection between worth and truth and then feel like they're being put their worth is being pulled down when all that's being said to them is some truth yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. certainly got in the way with, of Stuart's reasoning on the matter yeah uh, he and also his openness to say, uh, that's yeah. a sad thing I, like yeah. i i loved his initial openness but me just saying is very like what i felt was a very straightforward basic thing which which he still doesn't actually understand yet Mm -hmm. And that's what I was trying to point out. He doesn't get that yet because if he did, he would be doing things differently. Yeah. Um, but that caused too much offence, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, we'll talk to Rachel. No worries. How are you, Rachel? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, dear ones. How are you? Very, very well. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's wonderful to watch the mediumship occurring. Yeah, I, I feel it's good for Mary too, hey? It's just uh, challenge some of those feelings that she's been having about not wanting to communicate and yes. so yes. forth. Yes. She needs to develop the muscle. <laughs> <laughs> Only gets developed by use. <laughs> not avoid it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And getting things right is not a, like at the end of the day, everything is a learning process. So at the end of the day, getting things right is not the, is not the important thing. Uh, you need to be focused on obviously getting things right in the long term, but, but to get things right, you need to experiment. You need to engage in what we're trying to demonstrate to people here is a process of experimentation and engaging 
that needs to be uh, confronted, you know, and, and continued and things will develop then. Yes. So Mary's mediumship today is going to be very different if she does that to what it's going to be in 10 years' time, for example. Mm. Yes, we see a lot of potentials there that mm. she doesn't yet see. Yeah. And unfortunately, she she's so very afraid of of getting it wrong or having some kind of negative or improper influence mm. upon others that she neglects the opportunity to have a very positive influence yeah. on people. Yeah. Both yeah. here on earth and in the spirit world. Yeah, because uh, obviously there's people in the spirit world that love to talk to people on earth and, and there's plenty of people in the spirit world still who would like to convince people on earth that there is a spirit world. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you are both you are both testament to that fact. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. This desire that people know that there's more than the earth life. Yeah, yeah. Has led your big experiment. Yeah, of course. So would you like to speak about anything that we understand about the experiment? Or yeah, what, what yeah, would you that, like that'd to be probably good to today. stay with the theme a bit, mm. uh, would be probably good. I'm here with Timothy, I should mention. And uh, are there some spirits on the divine love path who are in the lower spheres observing, you know, in a scientific manner, observing? <laughs> the uh, process that's going on with the 14 who return to Earth. There are, but they, they have less of an organised uh, interest, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. They're each quite focused. Uh, once we have helped them to become aware of this possibility of a relationship with God in the real sense, because as you know, many people pass with an understanding of a relationship with God, which is quite in error. Yeah. And sometimes these people are quite easy to assist. Yeah. We can educate them very quickly as to what a real relationship with God constitutes. And then, as you know, once that first initial connection is made, uh, people become very focused on that development, mm. um, not to the exclusion of other things, but it does become their heart's desire. And, and that faith that is established through that connection makes them less interested perhaps in critical analysis mm, because mm. they feel more certain of things just based on that emotional connection. Yes, so they trust their emotional, the emotional truth of it all and so they don't need to be as in like critically informed intellectually about the matter. Yes, yeah. and, and something that Stuart and his group don't yet understand is that their strong interest in yourselves has a lot to do with some unresolved emotions that they have about God. Of course, which and is what I was trying to end up with in the end in the conversation, <laughs> as you know. Yes, you didn't get very far. Didn't get very far there. Yes. But it is yeah. very uh, common that we do spend a lot of time studying things that we fear mm. or things that we um, maybe don't fear, but we feel we have a lot of unresolved issues around. Mm. And sometimes... Very what we, to use the word struggle, perhaps is the wrong word, but what we struggle with are things that we become focused on and sometimes we actually become very proficient at as well. Mm -hmm. And so we do have some hope for Stuart's group that yeah, they no, will actually become... Um, eventually make that transition. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, I, I could feel in him a very a similar spirit to what I have about this scientific endeavour, desire for a scientific endeavour. Um, yeah, so yes. that, you know, there was some, uh, like, yeah, so a bit of sadness there on my part, just to have him terminate the conversation through his anger rather than, yeah. rather than just work through that issue. We'll, mm. we'll all pray that he returns. Yeah, yeah, we'll see what happens. So, it could um, be quite a pivotal moment for Stuart, in fact, in it his could be. growth. It yeah. could be, yeah. Um, so, so most of the people, is it right that most of the people observing us now are probably celestial spirits yes. in, in, a, in a sort of more loving context, observing us in a more loving context? Yes, yes. And, and some uh, some in lower, lower realms, mm. but mm. probably in the more organised sense, it's here in, um, from the eighth sphere onwards. Yeah. Yeah. And the purpose of that, for our listeners' sake, is... Well, 
Well, as we often say, it's a big experiment mm -hmm. and we're fascinated. Um, well, firstly, we, we care very deeply about each of you. Mm -hmm. And so there's a natural interest in not only yourselves, but in the mission, mm -hmm. if we could call it that. And mm -hmm. so we mm -hmm. care deeply for yourselves as individuals and then for the mission. And so that naturally causes a lot of us to be um, very close observers and supporters mm -hmm. in many ways. Mm -hmm. um, we attempt to assist and guide each one of the 14 every single moment. Mm -hmm. uh, there is always a, a number of us present uh, attempting mm -hmm. that process. Mm -hmm. and. Um, so, so in that way, you very closely observed, obviously, mm. as a part of that. And we're always seeking to, uh, perhaps I'll explain that a little bit later. But um, in terms of a, like uh, uh, something that resembles what Stuart and his group are doing, there are those among us who are almost creating scientific texts, if mm -hmm. you like, mm -hmm. that document the process that you're going through. Mm. And so... Um, yes, that's those two things are occurring. Mm. Uh, often for, the, for the sake of other people who, once this process has gone through, there will be some documentation process there. Yes, and um, obviously we're all aware as well that God communicates the potential mm -hmm. as we develop. Mm. And so just as it was communicated to each of you who are now returned, it it would be communicated to us. So. So the scientific text is not really uh, essential, if you like, no, no. but it is interesting and fascinating and it's faith building and it's And it also may, fun. Help, <laughs> it may help the spirits in the sixth sphere yes. um, as well. That's probably its primary intention, isn't yes. it? Yes, so there's many mm -hmm. hopes for the material that we're collecting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, but it doesn't... Obviously, we, we understand that God communicates the potentials to us and so we're not as interested so for again to compare to Stuart's group in for, for personal reasons understanding mm. and to to get this sort of knowledge which comes from uh which is not we don't mean here to undermine Stuart's process because we agree with the group in some principles that mm. it is mm. wonderful to discover truth and document it and build upon knowledge and be open to new potentials and ideas. Obviously, that's inherent in each of us here. Mm. Um, but we don't really come at this knowledge, documentation and seeking from perhaps the best way your listeners might understand it is from a sense of scarcity or fear or lack. We, we understand that all new possibilities and potentials are communicated to us directly through a relationship with God if we, if we desire that. Mm. Whereas um, many scientists on earth and in the spirit world who, who don't have that um, true relationship with God are coming at knowledge because they feel in a very intellectual way because they feel this is the only way that they can understand new potentials and this measurement and analysis is the only way that they can progress as individuals and as as a race uh, whereas we don't have that viewpoint mm -hmm. yeah and it's quite a limiting viewpoint isn't it because it, no matter what you discover you're still limited in your development to the sixth dimension anyway yes mm -hmm. oh, yes absolutely of mm -hmm. course um which is not a small amount of development no but of it, course but, but it doesn't enjoy the bliss of the of the other other condition no and mm. i think that that's something um that many people don't quite understand which is again understandable <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that the the significant contrast in the quality of happiness in say the fifth and seventh sphere as opposed to the sixth sphere mm. it's quite significantly mm. different mm. there's a there's a different depth there's a different quality is the best word i can think uh, in this language to describe it of the happiness contentedness uh quality of life mm. uh if there's some words i could use to describe that um than what a person in the sixth sphere experiences 
they still have a very significant amount of moral development and development in love, but it's not their experience of themselves and the experience of pleasant emotions has a different quality entirely to mm. those of the fifth and seventh yeah, or, or a, anyone in a connection. It's hard, isn't God, it? Really, it's sort of explaining to people who don't, who, who don't haven't yet experienced it, what mm -hmm. they actually like to experience. But mm -hmm. perhaps the best way to think of it is, is like you can gain a certain level of intellectual happiness, can't you, through yes. pursuits and yes. through, uh, you know, and through engaging pursuits that you enjoy, that are satisfying, that are in harmony with morals and ethics. And in those kind of pursuits, you can sort of get to the point where you go, yeah, I'm pretty happy about all the things I'm doing. It makes me quite happy and content. That's a completely different experience to actually feeling overwhelming joy and yes. happiness as an emotion in every experience you have. Yes. And, uh, and, and to compare the two conditions is like comparing, I don't know, it's like, it's, it's like comparing two completely different things. Perhaps, perhaps a good, perhaps a good, and perhaps it's only your viewers who, who perhaps experience this transition in history. But, and, and again, it's still limited, but it's like, going from black and white movies to color to color <laughs> yeah. or, or 3d color yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know that that's the you difference. can still enjoy the movie if it's black yes. and white but 3d color where you actually feel like you're in it that's going to be a different experience <laughs> totally different and yeah. and the reality is that anyone who begins their relationship with god whether they're on earth or in the first sphere gets to experience what you mentioned that overwhelming sense of joy immediately that they start mm. the relationship with God. And mm. it's just that the intensity and the uh, duration of that joy is short. Gr it grows Initially and grows short, as, yeah. yes, it, it increases mm. as time goes as it, through as we progress through the spheres. Mm. But I think that's another thing that people don't understand the difference about. It, it's like when we aren't in a connection with God, we are working towards a state of feeling better or feeling more happy or feeling, but it's, it's work and that the quality of the happiness is not complete. It's not complete unless you do something usually. Yes. Like it. And even your experience of happiness, say in the first sphere as opposed to the second sphere, well, you're kind of happy in the first sphere when you're happy. Yeah. And then in the second sphere, well, uh, it's a bit, a bit happier. <laughs> Whereas in the first sphere, when we connect with God and have that experience of God's love, there's overwhelming joy yes. for that for moment. For that brief period that, that we receive occurs. the love. Yeah. And that's something that people who are not yet in a relationship with God don't, don't experience. experience. And so because they haven't experienced it, talking to it, talking about it, makes it difficult because they don't understand the difference between this yes. pursuit of happiness, I suppose you could call it, mm -hmm. and actual being happy. Experience of yeah. happiness, and yes. That, and that's what I find quite difficult, isn't it's it? A, it's a wonderful thing about a relationship with God, isn't it? Mm. It's, I, Once you make the transition, wonderful. you can't ever understand how it was before. Mm. In the sense, well, you, in the sense, you understand it, but you yeah, can't understand how you lived in that place, <laughs> yeah. sort of thing. But when you live in the place before the relationship with God, you think it's normal. Mm. 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 Yes, you don't. It's like before colour talk, TV was invented. Yeah, black and white's normal. Yeah. And 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 if someone talks to you about happiness, you think you already have it. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's, the that's right. Thing I find is difficult because you talk to people who think they're already happy, and and it's very difficult to say, well, th yes, you're happy, but that that is a pursuit of happiness through action mm -hmm. and through states you know through states of being but this is actually a complete state of being where you're just mm -hmm. happy because of that one thing yeah that's right and that's another thing that that um that most people don't appreciate the that this Connection with God also creates a contrast. 
So, for example, when we connect with God and we experience this overwhelming joy and bliss mm. for whatever period, even if that ceases, we're now aware of a potential that, that, we, that when we're doing it the other way, mm. we're not aware of. Mm. And, and also, it, the nature of God's love, as you know, it makes us believe in potentials for even more. Mm -hmm. And so while you work to try and explain the potentials to someone who does not yet have a relationship with God, someone who's had even just one connection with God is usually far more open and has more faith to the fact that these potentials uh, exist and happiness can be so much more, even if they're not experiencing it mm. right then. And I suppose what you say is more applicable to spirit world than here to a degree, because what, what I find happens with people here a lot is they have that one experience, but then after a few days or a few weeks, the effects of the experience subsides. Mm. And then they seem to get to a point where they barely remember the experience or they think it was some kind of um, a, a, a mirage or, you know what I mean? Like, so, <laughs> And, and they, don't, they don't build on that uh, first experience to have the second. They begin to doubt their memory of this. Yes. But this, mm. is, this is interesting. Mm. And we're interested in your thoughts as well. This is, this is related to the decision to continue to sin, mm. is it not? It is. That it, it causes this fading of the memory-based experience. Mm. Um, yeah, the decision to continue to sin is something we're going to be discussing in our assistance groups coming up, as you know. And, yes. And just the decision to continue automatically is going to detune you in, or, and also cause you to doubt a, a previous experience with mm. God's love. Mm. And, um, and people don't realise how much of a strong effect that has, particularly on earth. In the spirit world, like unless uh, after you've gone beyond so the earth plan the earth sphere, the you know the earthbound condition, it's it's hard to um, not have a joyful experience and then not remember it sort of thing. Yes, yes. But here on earth, because of the condition of wanting to continue to sin in the spirit world, you might want to continue to sin, but you're, you're more and more restricted every time you sin. Mm -hmm. you're, 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 the restrictions and, uh, on your life are stronger and you feel them. And so it's a lot harder to, after you receive God's love, to continue to want to sin. Um, yes, and the experience hmm. is more sensory and yeah. uh, visible externally as yes. well. Yeah. And so there's a lot of reinforcement. There's a lot of ability to observe the body and mm. observe the environment that assists a person to have a continued faith, I suppose. Yes. Yeah, yeah, whereas here on Earth, uh, we're detuned to a degree from those particular things. And then you've got the pressure of the Earth itself and the condition of the Earth and the condition of the people on the Earth, which sort of try to get you back into not believing the experience as well. Mm. which I feel does have a significant effect on people who have had the experience. Well, and perhaps this is a good time for us to interview you now. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> about your experience of, um, of the earth life in this new state that you're in and how you remember the blissful state and what that feels like in the earth experience now. Yeah, because well, obviously your experience is different mm, from that of a person, from other people. In their first, mm -hmm. having their experience from the first. Yes, yeah. incarnation. Yeah, Yeah. well, I suppose the, the contrast between the two, the first time that it happened for me and now is very, very different. Because now it's tinged with so much pain and um, pain of loss, I suppose you could say. Mm -hmm. So every new, every new positive every new receiving of God's love I have, there's a new remembrance of what I've lost, mm. of that greater condition being lost. And so it's like, it's, it's difficult in, the, in this time because it, instead of, a, in, the, in the first time, it was more like every new time I experienced God's love, I was in a new state of joy, new state of happiness, new state of awareness, new state of contentment. And, and so forth without there being any experience of, oh, uh, now I've got a whole heap of memories about what I lost because I didn't lose anything, I just only gained. Mm. Um, whereas 
in coming to the earth again, you, you forget all the things you've lost initially in order to cope with the earth environment. And then as you become more and more aware, you're more and more aware of what you've lost. And, and that sort of, so it's always tinged with, yeah, you might have the reception of some of God's love, but then all of a sudden it's tinged with also this extreme amount of sadness that you've got to feel as well. And, um, and so that, that's sort of been a very different sort of experience. And I've had to have a lot of faith to continue mm -hmm. with that process to know that eventually that process will be finished. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Mm. And when you, when was the first time you remember having a feeling, so n not a conscious thought, but a feeling that this extreme bliss was a potential of a relationship with God? I think it was pretty much that first uh, day that I read about soulmates in the Paget messages, I think. Um, just that, you know, just reading all of that material again, because uh, as you know, what I did was basically I found uh, on the net the Paget messages, but instead of reading all the Paget messages initially, what I did was I downloaded every message that was just about soulmates. And at that time I had a 64 kilobit modem to download mm. information. So it took quite a while to download all this information. And then over the night, I just read it all. And because it confirmed all of these feelings of, uh, well, it confirmed all the feelings of loss of the soulmate relationship and loss of the relationship with God, but it also confirmed all the feelings of the truth about those relationships. Yes. And that's probably, as you know, that's the time when I really entered that state of, wow, a huge amount of grief while at the same time um, happiness that I discovered it, mm -hmm. but at the same time, huge amount of grief about having lost mm -hmm. it from before, you know? Yes. Mm. And that's, that's almost like, um, hmm trying to think of the right terminology to use here from our perspective observing that that period i want to say it's like a, a birth for you mm, um, it was, yeah. because it it was like before then almost like you were in black and white mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then um this awakening enabled a connection with the soul Again, it's difficult to describe, isn't it, in language? Mm. But a, a conscious connection with the soul mm. was established. And that conscious connection sort of brought you into technicolor from our viewpoint. That's an mm. analogy, but it, this... You, the, you guys would have been with me at that time when that happened. Yes. So what did you observe in my body, a spirit body at that time? Well, well that's what I'm trying <laughs> to relay in a, in a metaphorical way, mm. that it was... It, and in a way that perhaps your listeners might understand. So I'll give the analogy and then I'll try and explain it more technically. But mm. um, it was like up until that point, your spirit body looked dull in black and white. And then from that moment on, it, there was a, a, a vibrancy or an inner light, or, or if you like to use the analogy, like a, a colour quality. But that's that's not in. Um, there was many colours in your spirit body before that point, mm, mm. <laughs> and and after. Mm. But that's just a, a metaphor, if you like, mm. because the the level of um, vigour or movement of energy within your spirit body changed dramatically, mm, mm. and your condition in terms of viewing from the spirit body, the colours. And those some indicate um, damage or injury, and some indicate pure intentions and desires. And uh, you, as you know, there's a myriad of different things that are reflected in the spirit body from a, a, an observational mm. viewpoint. Mm. That changed significantly during that that um, couple of week period, where mm. suddenly there was a lot more evidence of. Uh, developed condition mm. and if you think about it it's funny isn't it because you you didn't go through a it's funny but obvious but you didn't go through uh you went through emotion but it was essentially just about 
connecting to your soul and who you were, mm. who you are. Mm. And you didn't release any particular injuries, mm -hmm. but it, it's like you were operating from a completely false idea of who you were before that point. Mm. And then that, that period enabled some connection with the soul, but it also changed your... condition mm. uh, um, it's difficult to explain yeah in some ways it sort of felt like I woke up um, yes but I, but there was no change in my nature there's no change in my personality or anything like that it's just all of a sudden I woke up and 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 it's um, obvious isn't it that many of your intentions now uh, are not dissimilar to what your intentions were before that period that's right but y you weren't um, properly engaged with them mm. until you had this recognition mm. of your identity. Mm. And that's how it appears from a physiological, if I could use that word, standpoint mm. in the spirit body. Mm. 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 Spiritological. Spiritological. <laughs> Physiological. <laughs> Metaphysical is probably the, uh, the correct terminology, isn't it? But... Uh, for want of better terminology. For want of a better word, yeah. 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 So, um, obviously, um, our celestial friends, were all of you were informed about our returning before it actually happened. So you all knew uh, about it going to happen. Um, yes, yes. Um through our connection with God, we were aware of, course, of that. Yes. Of course, yeah. yeah. So you were all informed on that regard. Yes. Um, when did you, did any of you actually observe it happening, the actual first incarnation experience of, by one of the 14? I personally did not. Let mm -hmm. me just um, find out some more. Yes, some were drawn. Some were drawn. It's, it's, a, it's an unusual scenario because while there was a communication that this potential was now possible, mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't given as a on the 10th of March 1963 <laughs> uh, a, uh, well nine uh, months before then really but yeah <laughs> yes but but a memo a memo <laughs> yeah. um, but there but obviously through our soul-based interest and desire to know about this mm -hmm. some of us were drawn to the events of mm -hmm. different people incarnate so the conception mm -hmm. and then the uh, birth Mm -hmm. of a number of you mm -hmm. yes so yes mm -hmm. there was a number mm -hmm. as i said i personally wasn't one of them mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yes and that, and um uh, i suppose that some people would think that you know it'd be like a blanket announcement to the yes <laughs> to the spirit world which is not the case <laughs> with the trumpets yeah, yeah, and and so the angels, no. yeah which is a very <laughs> biblical way of seeing it but um but not a very accurate way of seeing it yes and um, that's not what happened obviously what happened was that you know once we decided we wanted to do it it happened <laughs> <Bang>. <laughs> exactly <laughs> and, uh, and so yeah. at the moment of the decision was also the moment it begins happening. So to be there and present, you have to be pretty in tune with the desires of the people who are actually doing it. That's right. Um, and and uh, while some of us were very in tune with that desire, obviously we didn't have that desire developed to the same degree as those people who did return. Yeah, that's right. So mm -hmm. so that's uh, the first one. And so you saw me come in first. Mm -hmm. And those, well, you know, when when... The, f the people who first saw, who actually observed it happening, the conception process I'm talking about now, and that it would probably be me going to that particular conceived bodies. Mm -hmm. um, who, who was present with that? 
So uh, Michael and Nicodemus, mm -hmm. yes, and had that that stayed on as as guides for yeah. you. Yeah, that's very in for most of your life, actually. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. yeah. And then um, who was next? It was John, I think. Um, yes. Yes, and there were people observing, and many times it was, it was. Um, by people who became your guides hmm. or people who uh, had had relationships, close relationship with you in prior. the celestial mm. yeah, heavens prior yeah. to this period. Yeah. 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 All right. So we were, um, that's a bit of a digression. Where, where were we before you started that digression? <laughs> well, um, you mean about the conception? No, about the discussion about... Um, about your experience yeah. where I was interviewing you? Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> um, so, uh, would you like us to talk about what we observed at your conception, though? Is that why you were asking about it? Um, uh, myself, uh, to myself, it's not, <laughs> as you know, not that important thing. Um, but... Um, you know, obviously, I still have some feelings about the process. You mm. know, because it is quite a traumatic process if you mm. if you are conscious of what's going on. Um, fortunately, for people who in their first incarnation, number one, they're not conscious of what's going yeah. on, so that that's greatly helpful. Yeah. <laughs> um, number two, they don't have control over who, what body they select, and so or what incarnation. You know what the spirit body material body who's just created those and what they can't actually select the body uh, it's an automatic sort of a process based on other attractions mm. um, so obviously it's a bit different than that too but also the um the emotion that enters the, the incarnated soul uh interests me i suppose mm. um because the emotion that in, in, enters the incarnated soul in the first incarnation is very, very different to the emotion that in, in, enters the incarnated soul when you come, when you return again. Um, yes, and this is difficult um, for us to observe accurately. Mm. And it's probably more correct to say that as we've watched each of you grow and respond to life and observe things in your spirit form, mm -hmm. We've come to understand and see quite clearly that for yourselves, there's emotions that enter you at the time of conception and throughout pregnancy and in early childhood, just like for everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, but these experiences are heightened. You are more sensitive to every experience. And this is obviously because of the... Um, sensitive soul the sensitive mm. soul the the soul that has developed an extreme amount of sensitivity beforehand and also to do with the experiences of the soul prior to that point mm. Mm. so certain things become highly sensitized based on the memory of those experiences prior. yes mm. but this is all happened it's a, it's been very fascinating to watch because it's all happening in a way that uh, as we mentioned earlier, prior to your kind of awakening or understanding of who you were, everything is very suppressed in the spirit body. Mm. The the emotions and the the injuries are all there, and to quite a to quite an extreme degree, in fact, yeah, very because intense, of this yeah. sensitivity and memory based <laughs> mm. issue. But it's a very suppressed energy, and mm -hmm. many of the fourteen would relate to that feeling of feeling quite. Um, heavily suppressed heavily suppressed mm -hmm. uh, and that's because once there is a, an emotional connection with the awareness of identity it enables more energy to flow from the major the, the energy source for both of the bodies which is the soul mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but prior to that point that lack of awareness of self of true self uh, means that the supply of energy from the soul is greatly diminished. Yeah, so it's an attenuator or a block yes. to the, the actual soul-based feelings. But that mm. is coupled with the fact that there is a heightened sensitivity mm. and the, 
the um, issue of memory affecting. So, for example, when a child is hit uh, for the first time and they're a child, that creates a significant um, uh, injury, or, mm. you know, unless they're allowed to grieve it and they're allowed to talk about it, to, to, to process, as you call it, the mm. experience, to, mm. to put it in context and to understand that their worth's not involved and blame and, mm. and responsibility and all of those things. Mm. That's a part of processing. It's not just having the cry. It's understanding the context. Uh, so for, for each child, whenever that happens, it creates a problem when that processing is shut down. Mm. But when it occurs for someone who is returned, what we now know through observation, and it's quite logical, is that that experience, because there are other memories and there is the heightened sensitivity, becomes a, a, a bigger deal, a mm. bigger problem in mm. the energy systems and mm. the workings of the body and the spirit body because of the of the soul. Mm. And mm. Uh, mm. yes, yeah, so so no, that's why the spirit body and the body and the the experience of life is quite depressed because there's each new event has to be. It has suppressed. Is, is suppressed, yes. Unless you're willing to process it emotionally. Yes. And the trouble with starting the process emotionally is that you start it and it's going to be very, very confusing because you're going to start having memories and experiences and emotions that have no relationship to your current life. So that yes. makes it very, very confusing for yes. the people who have returned. Which is, which mm. is why the issue of identity is so crucial mm. to those who have returned. And that's uh, why they're fighting it so they, much. Too. <laughs> yes, with the exception of yourself, mm. every single one is fighting mm. that emotional awareness. Mm. And yet that is the ticket to their, to their heightened experience of life, of mm. the soul, of contentment mm. um, and energy mm. and progression and, mm. and uh, all of those wonderful gifts of living mm. Mm. Um, and and we made this comment to you um over a year ago in another channeling that this this is this is why the issue of identity is so mm. crucial for each of those who've returned to address emotionally mm. Uh, now, Which, and it's also the issue they seem to fight the most, yeah. so, <laughs> I've noticed. Yes. We, I still have some of them emailing me after, you know, not talking to me for 10 years, <laughs> still complaining about the fact that I think they're one of the 40. <laughs> so it's just like, it just goes on and on. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, and um, it is difficult to conceive how, how each of you must come to terms with it from mm -hmm. from an emotional perspective because yeah. obviously we, we i've always been rachel <laughs> yeah yeah no it is it is a very difficult process speaking from the experience and um, and that's probably the other thing i've noticed about the difference between the first century incarnation the first one and this one and that is in the first one i had the luxury of not having my worth connected to you know my people's people's treatment of me mm -hmm. whereas in this life i haven't had that luxury and it's been quite extreme mm. um feeling the difference between feeling that you know that there's something about me that causes people to mm -hmm. uh, treat me so badly at times and mm. that is something that you share with every other person <laughs> mm. Mm. Uh, with the exception of yourself in the first century that was where you were unique back that's then. right yeah mm. and that's a big contrast for me too yeah and uh and something, and I suppose with the height, the difference is that I have a heightened emotional response to it as well. Yes. Uh, to the average person, yes. so, um, so that that I'm finding that quite confronting at times, mm. and it's taken me, as you know, a long time to stop punishing myself for how people treat me. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And what do you think was the emotional catalyst that caused you to open up your soul to your identity because obviously you didn't unlike the others you you had no preconception whatsoever no context for your experience when you say unlike the others well because you uh, you are now public about your identity 
Um, they could. They could. They could observe consider you, the possibility. They could consider the possibility that mm. perhaps, perhaps I'm having an experience like this guy is having. Yeah. Uh, whereas, whereas for I didn't yourself, have that you didn't luxury. have that. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, for myself, I think it was just primarily the two things: uh, my relationship with God and my relationship with my girl. Um, I think, I think those two things were once once I, I've always, as you know, I've always had a feeling of loss about my soulmate, and I've always had this feeling or sense of loss about God as well that has always been there in this life. And uh, and as a result, I've spent a lot of my life quite alone mm -hmm. and in a state of pondering about all that stuff, mm -hmm. I suppose you could say. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, I think I think that those two things and the desire to. And the desire, I think the third thing was perhaps the desire to eventually be happy as mm -hmm. well, like to have a personal desire to be happy. Um, sort of drew me through the experiences. Mm. Um, From our perspective, we saw that those three desires became very heartfelt longings during that period. Mm. Um, and I've always had the longing for truth, which is mm -hmm. obviously a big factor, but to become aware of a truth that you don't really want to mm -hmm. become aware of and that you don't and have no believe in idea of yes yeah you don't believe you know before before i had the those experiences i didn't believe that there was anything like i didn't certainly didn't believe anybody on earth would be jesus and and i certainly didn't believe that it, that i could be mm -hmm. <laughs> and i certainly didn't believe that it was possible to reincarnate and i certainly didn't believe in I didn't even really, uh, well, I had, I suppose, as, yeah, as you know, my my beliefs about Jesus were quite confused before mm -hmm. then, as mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, in that I didn't seem to have a very, a lot of people who are Christian religious, uh, which I was, would have a fairly strong connection with Jesus generally, uh, or feel they do, um, and yet I had almost none. <laughs> so, um, where my connection was more about God all the time. Um, and would you have said you, you were Christian religious at this period? Um, not, not really. I'd gone through, as you know, the experience, uh, what was it, sort of seven years prior mm -hmm. of uh, r removing myself from a Christian religion. Um, but I still had a very strong feeling about God and that God was real and true and, and those kind of things. Um, and I was, had a growing ex feeling that I was accepted by God, even if I didn't have a religion. Mm -hmm. um, so, so those kind of things were true. But mm -hmm. when it comes to me being a so-called Christian, mm -hmm. uh, which you would say, I suppose, uh, the way most people on earth see it is a believer in Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, I've never really had a belief in Jesus mm -hmm. my whole life. So... <laughs> That's part of your problem now, <laughs> in a way, in a way. Well, I can see why I didn't have one then. <laughs> it's, a, it's um, you know. From our perspective, what we see for each of the 14, and because of what we have just described about the sensitivity of the soul, is that, as you know, fear pervades the earth. Mm. plane at the moment mm. uh, in this time period. It's certainly the most dominant emotion. It's the it? most dominant emotion. Mm. And what we see for each of you is that fear will be the emotion mm. for each of you to release mm. in order to become your full selves again. Mm. And as you know, I'm still having issues with working through fear. Yes which I'm still finding quite challenging at times to, to address the amount of fear that one of the 14 has is quite a lot more than what a normal person would ex have to experience. Yes. Mm. So, so that's, and we, we want to encourage each of you. Mm. We know that it's, it's difficult to, um, to feel that anyone relates <laughs> to your experience. Mm. And in, in, most cases in most cases nobody does <laughs> it's impossible yeah, it's impossible and mm -hmm. i've sort of as you know gotten to the point of feeling well 
you know, when I am connected to God, I know that God relates to the, you know, understands the experience, but um, sort of given up the idea that anybody else will <laughs> anytime soon. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's part of the progression. Yeah. That we observe, especially for each of you, but for all of us. Mm. Um, yeah, personal progress is personal. Mm -hmm. And in the end, it is between you and God and in the eventually between you and your mate, isn't it? And, That's right. And at the end of the day, no one else really, unless you're of a higher development, nobody else can really understand what you've been through. But even if you are of a higher development, if you haven't actually been through those particular things yourself, uh, it's not always easy to understand, you know, the different feelings involved either. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that is another beautiful opportunity we see amongst all of the 14 is the potential if each of you are able to work through fear mm. the potential to reflect such a diverse understanding understanding because of mm. your different injuries and experiences mm. um, it's yeah. immense yeah it could it and could course, impact every corner of the globe yeah yeah and of course amongst the 14 there is a, even from the first century, there is a diverse range of experiences there as well. Yes. So when you add the two experiences, plus the, the sort of life in the spirit world, plus the sense of loss, mm -hmm. which, which is far more immense than anybody mm -hmm. needs to go through in their first incarnation, you, you sort of get a very wide uh, spectrum of the kinds of emotions that, you know, a person can process and cope with and deal with yes. and and in some ways it demonstrates the incredible capacity of the soul to actually deal with things mm. 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 yeah well our medium is, is getting tired, tired now yeah. <laughs> so we'll have is to consider that conversation uh, uh, continue that conversation at another time to be continued yeah to be continued on that thank conversation. you very much for the opportunity to come and speak with you yeah. as you know it's been a long time since i've had this pleasure mm. and uh yeah. we we also want to thank those of you who are working with you towards this mm. this wonderful goal and, small... and encourage them that we are often present with them also yeah it's lovely to see a small team developing isn't it and yes a, a team of people who want who really not just talk about wanting change but actually put yeah. their whole life into it you know yeah yeah that, that's quite unique as you know it is mm. and yet it, that's what life's like here mm. and and it's mm. just it's just wonderful to see um and we feel that they that those initiatives they take to to really um live the principles and love god and be loved by god that is that is so supportive of each of you as well yeah yeah and um that is our hope that you would have support in such a such uh, an immense journey that each of you are undertaking each of the 14. yeah yeah mm. and uh, you know as you know i've always been concerned about trying to provide support to the 14 because i understand you know obviously the difficulties that they're going to face but mm. um you know to see people in their first incarnation actually embracing some of the principles but also putting their life into it as well not just not just some lip service into mm. it is is quite a lovely thing to see you know it's wonderful mm. 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 well we'll leave you no worries thank you thank you <laughs> only so. only in this no worries we'll, we'll, we'll still talk be again around. as we do yeah. <laughs> thank you no worries yeah see you later Roger. Okay, well, we'd like to thank you guys for listening to us uh, rambling there you know, <laughs> with our friends. <laughs> you know, usually we have these conversations uh, by ourselves. Obviously, you don't get to see many of them. Most of them, Mary and I, yeah. don't even record. And uh, mostly that's probably because <laughs> Mary doesn't like them recorded. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. But, and also uh, they happen just in the course of our 
day-to-day -day 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 activities day anyway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's not something that we'd normally record. Yeah. So, so you get sort of a little glimpse into our life there, by our discussions with our celestial friends. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for doing that, darling. It's my pleasure. And, uh, we'd like thank to thank you. today our recording staff out the back there, some learners out the back as well as actual recording staff out the back. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. For your, for your work out there. <laughs> and uh, um, we look forward to seeing all of you. And we'll turn to this main camera yeah. now. <laughs> we look forward to seeing all of you uh, over the next few. We're going to continue, of course, with our conversation about the conscience. Yes. Because uh, we've still got questions to answer about the conscience. So that's probably going to be one of our next discussions. And then we're thinking that we will proceed with preparing you for our next assistance group yes. by answering some of your questions from the last three assistance groups and getting you ready for this uh, assistance group relating to sin, which we still hold to hope. We're not uh, hold, hope to hold, I should say. <laughs> uh, we're not sure whether it would be November this year or February next year, but it'll be mm -hmm. one of those two dates. Yes. So. So understanding that, sin. Yes. yes. And then uh, we've decided we're probably going to do the understanding sin and give all of you a chance for a year to <laughs> contemplate sin <laughs> before we talk about removing it. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, what our plans are over the coming months. And we look forward to uh, seeing you again, even if it's just in the uh, digital form. Yeah. So Thanks, thanks everyone. for your time, guys. <laughs> See you later.